plays out. I'm joined by Snowy once again as my co-caster, and uh, here we go. The draft underway. We already have a couple of picks. So Lord South Forest, Behemoth, Wild Soul, and Midas. We have a War Beast into a Magnus. So, you know, seeing Lord South Forest first ban here now by Complex, it really does lead me to believe that they somehow forgot about it. <laughs> Like it was fourth pick. Must be the case. Yeah. Last game, and they now first ban it here. So that's interesting. But anyways, <laughs> sometimes it happens. I guess so. Sometimes maybe they were just shaken up a little bit uh, by their last series, so they weren't really in the draft last game, uh, or somehow just forgot about the hero. It happens. Unfortunately, that's the case. I know of uh, certain occasions when you have been like drafting a San Ref and then you forgot or forget to ban the Cersei and the. Uh, Banning stage, and then you're just like slamming your head when the enemy team picks it up. Yeah. But um, yeah, it happens even to the best. Kronos, right click. Sync Esports has been the ones mainly playing that hero, in that case, in the carry role as Haxron. It's been working out quite well. Um, it's a very fun and entertaining hero to watch. So I wouldn't mind seeing a Kronos play it here. But uh, with War Beast, the synergy isn't the best. Obviously, he needs to get close in, deal that physical out attack damage, and placing the Chrono Field just in position for that to happen is not an easy task in the middle of a team fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mentioned Sync's done it a couple times. Yeah, they're the only team though that I have seen. So um, that that would be that would be interesting to see for sure coming out here, but. Uh, you know, complexity, I think a lot of it, especially knowing, against, uh, frankly, against a team that they, again, are the favorites and should be beating and everything on the line, it's you know, maybe, maybe sticking some tots, just what, what's comfortable for you, what you've done before many of times, kind of going with that. Kind of like we saw last game, you know, Oscar on Behemoth and that suicide, he happened to dominate too, but, you know, across the board, it seemed like just pretty comfortable stuff, and we, we, we got that so far, at least. War Beast, of course, so we expect that to end up with what you got. Profit, and now Riptide going to end up with the Fuzzy Sloth. I got to say, I mean, Riptide's kind of interesting. It, his laning presence is obviously really strong, very, very difficult to, at points to deal with, and Riptide profit complexity showing to be pretty powerful. It feels like the Riptide hasn't really had, like, too many dominating games, though. It feels like it's it's not like a Pebbles or anything like that, so... <laughs> well, it can semi-carry if it gets a good start. I mean, this is kind of the composition that Complexity ran over their opponents with in the early cycles. Um, cycle 1 to 4, more or less, when they won literally every single one, or placed top 2 at least. Uh, but then, somehow, it tapered off a little bit. They didn't pick it up as much, but now it seems like they are kind of transitioning back to their old roots. They just want to play what works for them, I guess, take no unnecessary risks whatsoever, and then this is probably the composition that makes most sense for them. One that they are most uh, comfortable with. So uh, I personally love it, as I pointed out in game one as well, that these a little bit more aggressive playstyles were fussy, like that playmaker, so that he can actually play a little bit on a semi-carry role and open up space on the map for fussy or no, for um, formless. Yeah. You know what? This could be a war beast in the safe lane as well. We have seen complexity around that a couple of times. True, yeah, they definitely have. That's, that's, yeah, that's a good point. And I guess that, that does, like a lot of teams, you may just figure, okay, that's going to be a jungle war beast. But, you know, a team like Evil Corporation, they've run the suicide war beast plenty of times with Zane, and, and you bring up complexity even in the short lane. So, yeah, it's not as obvious of a jungle by any means. That's why these heroes are so good at or for first pick material, because the opponents literally give or gain no information whatsoever. Uh, regarding the laning stage. Same with Magnus on the Hellborn side, like you can't possibly know where he's going to end up. We have seen cases where he's even played in the secondary support role, um, but he can be mid, he can be suicide, maybe not in the safe lane, but you get my point, like BMG has been running hit in the forest as well, like jungle pulling. I haven't seen that lately though, but it has happened at the times. Yeah. It's a very viable hero in many roles. We will see her. They will only got 15 seconds left here to think about it, and usually you want to save or, yeah, save some of that time to the last two hero picks, but uh, seems to be something on their mind that they just can't. We're gonna go with Silhouette here. <laughs> and then right away, Complexity goes with Doctor, so they, I don't even know if they were really thinking Silhouette anyway, so. Probably not. Uh, I don't think. Riptide War Beast, both of them out attackers. Silhouette kind of an out attacker as well. They need some kind of initiation, some kind of lockdown as well. So Dr. Pulsar makes sense. 
Um, what other options could there have been? Seeing as it's so complexity, I wouldn't have been too surprised with another melee carry. Like a dark but, lady, um, but they, they don't like dark lady lately. They've made that clear, so. Okay. Not so much. Gladiator. Love that hero. Just. I, it's so amazing ever since they swapped up or reworked this ultimate. The fact that you can cast it at any location. Like back in the days, a few months back, like you were only able to cast it straight in front of you. It was such a hassle. Yeah. But now it's just you know freely usable tool. You can time it with your pitfall. I can't believe we're not seeing the seeing it more in the competitive scene than we are. Yeah. No. When, when he first got those changes, the caught of arms, it was strong, and we were seeing it uh, quite a bit actually. But it did get toned down a little bit as far as the duration of the buff that his teammates get uh it used to be just flat 10 seconds i even so what a what a finish we had here by the way nymphora final pick for complexity like where does that coming from we have not seen nymphora in forever <laughs> and then thunderbringer to finish it all off on the side of lgt or is that a random wow uh was it a random it was a random oh. Oh man, okay. but it works. It's not the worst case. I mean, it actually makes sense with the lineup. They could have had something a little bit more, um, maybe a little bit more physical damage in general, but I still think it makes sense. I mean, they got Gladiator, he can act as that hard carry. If you pick up the Shroud and the Rift Charts, which I know for a fact that you are a big fan of, you like to see them red crits. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, so it's kind of interesting here because complexity is even like asking, like, what do you want? Like, did you mean to? They realize they're in, and then <laughs> LGT hasn't even said anything. Like, they're just yeah, like, they're fine. Oh, Play whatever. Cool. I guess we're playing. I mean, okay. Yeah, go still, I mean, if they haven't said anything by now, like, they got to play. Like, you can't just wait out this whole time. Because obviously, what they would be doing is maybe talking to over and thinking, like, so. It looks like they're sticking with it, though. All right. So, despite being a random, they're going to go with a Thunderbringer here. All right. That's their yeah. final pick. Well, this Riptide skin, what's up with that? Is that, like, bugged for you as well? Or is he, like, in tons of different colors? Uh, or is that just me? That That's that's what the skin is. It's it's kind of weird like oh. that, yeah. Damn. All right. I was wondering if it was my client. But honestly, not the case. Yeah, and if four as well for complexity, I love the offensive playstyle that they're bringing to the table here in game number two. Um, just think it fits their playstyle as well with Oscar and Fastslot being such active players. Like, just show, I mean, Complexity Gaming, they haven't been so successful in this cycle so far. Swap it up a little bit, play more offensive. Uh, maybe they're frustrated as well, so fits perfect. We used to see Nifor and the Dr. Pulsar quite a bit back during DreamHack Summer, I think it was, or previously, or yeah, previous to DreamHack Summer, Evil Corporation, former recent gaming, mostly known for playing it, but then Dr. Pulsar received an uh, out attack range nerf down from 500 to 450, so it wasn't as viable in those dual lanes, especially in the mid lane where the out attack range is a huge factor. So it tapered off quite a bit, but I'm glad to see it back here once again. So I wonder where it's going to end up. Yeah, that that's also interesting too. Uh, what you got now, back to back games, he's going to be playing a secondary support here, as he is on that Nymphora, sure enough. Uh, Oscar and playing the Suicide War Beast here, even so. Um, so with that Thunderbringer final pick again, I, I obviously it wasn't necessarily intended, but it happened. They're sticking with it. They are going to send Gladiator long lane bottom, so it is going to be the aggressive tri lane. It looks like coming out from LGT actually. And they're going to short lane a Magmus. Mm -hmm. Oh here. my god, we were going over the Magmus viable lanes in the draft, and I was like, okay, maybe not safe lane, but every okay. other lane is possible. But hey, they're showing that they can actually run it in the safe lane as well. This brings me back to old BMG, Hanskin, Seal Kid, Jonas and Fan, and all those guys. They were like crazy on this part. Like, they were always running offensive tri lanes with heroes such as Amora, Grinix and all, and then they had like bubbles and Kraken in their safe lanes, and as soon as they hit level 6 on those heroes, they just ported down to the offensive tri lane, and they just took control over the enemy jungle every single game. Yeah. It was the same way, and they made it work. Now, Gladiator is one of those heroes as well that can be very effective early on with those pitfalls. It's a very long stun duration, so I'm looking forward to see how they actually pull this one off. Um, Oscar in the suicide lane, who are they going to play, place in the safe lane? If they actually place Nymphora and Dr. Pulsar in the safe lane, then Formless might be suffering. His farm is not going to go very well, at least, mm -hmm. if the Hellborn team plays their cards correct. Yeah, seeing a Gladiator, again, the adjustments being made. Gladiator has kind of that main source of farm here and that true carry for the team. Now, again, that's not completely out of the question. Complexity did have that history doing it. 
Talking about earlier, too, how they, you know, Formless has played that Gladiator and that carry role, and he has potential, again, with the big crits and the whiplash and everything, but usually not your your ideal. It seems like more of that utility support is she even, the ganking presence, Gladiator is just preferred, but again, mm -hmm. gonna, gonna yeah, go with that role. here. Slowski Dirt used to play quite a bit uh, not too long ago uh, when the hero was reworked or changed a little bit at least. Um, he went for the Sacrificial Stone and, and he played it in the mid every single time. So it was just a constant like ganking presence running around the map, gaining a lot of levels and just setting up kills. I mean, it was a counterpick to Dr. Pulsar in this particular game, I'm sure. But at the same time, even though it works as a counter, it's still very easy to dodge. Especially in the mid to late game, because all you need to do is be in the midst of a flight, uh, and you're not going to be ported back. So in that case, it's a little bit unfortunate, so they need to make sure to time it with, well, what do they have? Like, only the lava search, more or less, from the Magnus, and that might not be too easy of a task. So I'm not sure if it's necessarily going to counter Formless as, as much, but it still works very well versus Oscar as well on the War Beast, seeing as he's one of those mobile heroes that can create a lot of distance in a short period of time. All right, well, I think both teams saying go, that they're ready, not going yet. There we go. Yeah, okay. I mean, I hate when that happens. Sometimes you just forget that it's Somebody. your team that actually paused, and you're like, are you guys ready soon? And we're like, yeah. you paused. We're waiting for you guys. Oh, I love the okay. Spanish here, <laughs> yeah. or whatever language we're talking. I assume it's Spanish. Let's talk Spanish in Bolivia, right? Sure. I don't know. I don't know the <laughs> official language of Bolivia. I assume it I might. I think it is. Spanish at least is probably spoken there at the very least, but yeah, it might be. I do not know Something much like that. of South America and their history and culture. I'm from oh. North America. All that right, means that you're boss. so close. Yeah, right. Just next door. should know everything yeah. about them. I mean, I know everything about Africa. It's next door to me. <laughs> Just kidding. How's the other game going? Is that still in that first one here? We got ECX. They are. Yeah, they're still in that first game, about 38 minutes in now. Still Damn, not the most action, but Pine is in the lead. Yeah, Oogie, how about that? Level 25. Five. So they went Scout, which, yeah, Scout's kind of interesting because he's obviously not like the great counter carry that he is in a lot of ways with that disarm. Uh, Oogie's not necessarily as concerned about that. So True. The silence sure could be still pretty good, but not having the disarm that as effective definitely would hurt their chances, I would think. Yeah, impressive games back to back, at least by Ola Lund, playing uh, the what was it, Armadon versus Complexity, and now having a quite an impressive performance here as well versus Evil Corporation. Where's Pine? Pine going into that series, they're they only had three points at 03 and two, so. They're not like, even if they happen to go 2-0 against them and then their final series, the best that can finish is ninth place. Or nine points, I should what? say. Nine <laughs> points. Okay, yeah, nine points. Okay, um, okay. Which, you know, could actually be interesting if they manage to do that, but obviously that would be quite the stretch. Um, but still looking good that they're able to compete against Even Corporations teams. is the master of counter-pushing, though, or split-pushing, so it's going to be very difficult to looking at the Hellbound lineup to actually, especially with an Ugi, who is literally the worst carry uh, when it comes to sieging base. Uh, to actually break towers and break base, so I wouldn't count even cooperation out of that one. Yeah. All right, so it is still offensive trial at least. So it seems like Legion team are going to send profit down here as well and allow Riptide to solo feed. Are being very offensive here, probably regret regretting that decision here. Um, Rhapsody though, in general, probably the best outboxer or probably the best hero for support versus support battles, thanks to his incredibly high physical armor trading out attacks is always going to be in your favor a lot of players make the mistake they think that when staccato is up that's when i go in and harass but even without staccato up you're still going to come out in a favorable trade so just be as aggressive as possible oh there's a zeal stone there this is an interesting avatar of nymphora by the way Got some fun ones pop up here but yeah it's it's definitely different to see nymphora once again in a lane here but you got mm. Gladiator. Yeah, I would love for them to be much more aggressive. Like, they should be using their mana already if they're playing offensively like this. Much for the reason that I just pointed out as well, with Rhapsody being such an offensive hero, or has the potential to be such an offensive hero. But I feel like, I mean, the pitfall, though, it's it's tough, because 
it's obvious when it's being casted, of course. So the idea yeah. that you know they'd be well, able to... you can like as long as Rhapsody. I mean, as you can see, I mean, he's always True. in range of the enemy heroes. So as long as you just start it off with Pitfall and then you follow it up with the Staccato, I mean, that shouldn't be any problems whatsoever to uh, uh, communicate between Gladiator and uh, Rhapsody. So yeah, I mean, having full man on both those heroes is a mistake, at least. Yeah, to also clarify for before that gets out of hand, I mean. It, Complexity was pretty clear, like they were willing to remake here for that random. It's not like they, they're not being BM by any means here. They, they were the ones that were saying, you know, what do you want? And LGT was the one that <laughs> yeah. was like, you know what, we'll, we'll stick with it. We, there's a time for a reason. So just, just to be very clear there. You can call the BM either, like even if, you know, I'm one of those guys that's just feel like you should be rules a little bit rules. tougher even. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because the time limit is there for a reason, as we say. So. All right, though, but... Uh, after that here, how is Thunderbringer doing here in the middle? Not not too great. Nine and one here. Again, understandable. He's kind of being boxed out by this prophet, having to deal with that, and obviously Riptide in general, pretty difficult to deal yeah, with. Yeah, got a haste there. rune now at least, so he shouldn't necessarily fall victim to any first blood attempts. Hopefully, at least. But yeah, Love is making a really good effort here in the mid, keeping him away from experience. Warby's up at the top lane, that should be a very favorable matchup for the Magmus with that Lava Surge ability of his. Hopefully he maxes it out as well. Yeah, it did. He's got Lava Surge level 3 now, but the Volcanic Surge in level 2. Hellhounds, as we can see there, being put on to Magmus, but oh, he needs to be careful. There's so wow. much damage. If he had Lava Surge level 3, that might have been a kill. Hey, he has level 3 Lava Surge. Oh, I meant uh, Volcanic Touch. Oh, the touch the other way damage. around. Yeah. yeah, but then the, the damage on the stun would have been less, so I don't think it would have been a kill. But it would have been very, I mean, it was still very close yeah. either way. Oh, by the way, at the bot lane, they did manage to pull off the combination, but now they just need to do that over and over, a little bit more. As yeah. you can see, I mean, Rhapsody using that staccato, like, barely touches his mana pool, but now he's going to throw the Disco Inferno. <laughs> yeah, they... So they finally try, and obviously not enough in the end, but at least trying and keeping that pressure on the good thing there. And Yeah, yes, burning through the region is all you should aim for. I mean, do it one, two. If not, you get a kill on those, you're going to get it on a third attempt. So just keep on trying. Obviously, there is a health pod cooldown now as well on two minutes, so you can't region up, then you would have to run back to the base, and that's certainly not something that you want for Dr. Pulsar at this point, at least. Zach, or Nymphora, interesting always, too. And especially being a while here by how he levels and whether or not he likes to get the grace of the nymph or the volatile pot is what it really comes down to. And it looks like he's going the pod route to this this game here at least. With the heal and the more burst damage even. Yeah, I think that's the right decision, so definitely props for what you got in this case. And they don't necessarily need a mana, as you can see. I mean, they are more than happy to just keep this lane steady. If the Hellborn team were to put a little bit more pressure on, then the Legion team might be forced to use their spells a little bit more offensively as well. Here we go. What you got? Yeah, they're going to go in one another right there. And Nymphora is dropping. However, he's going to help get the turn kill first onto Gladiator. And now Rhapsody's on the run. Dr. Repulsor chasing him down. Has another cooldown. One second. Not going to be close enough, though. Kufe block coming in. But they got the important kill. Yeah, very well played by Formless there. Seeing the opportunity, going for the kill. Mm -hmm. Successfully gaining the first blood. And uh, now Riptide is level 6 as well, so now it's going to be problematic as he jumps into the mid lane. It looks like he has a DD, <laughs> but actually it's fun who has one. Yeah, not, nothing you can do with Thunderbringer there. Again, the glaring weakness of a Thunderbringer is if you get on top of him, he's not getting away. Kind of. I mean, the new the, the change to blast a lightning himself and run a little faster, I guess, is a little bit of potential, but it's not ideal. So, um, yeah, point being, they get an easy kill out of him using that Riptide ultimate. So, yeah, the lane's unfortunately not going all too well here for LGT to start, other than Magmus. Magmus is actually top in the game. You know, I was talking about this matchup here. That Volcanic Touch, it's really, I mean, he actually is pretty damn good against a minion-based hero that is Warbeast. And that's been showing. So the question is, you know, what kind of impact is a farming Magmus truly going to be able to have when his whole team isn't really doing much else around him, unfortunately? So, yeah. Uh, I mean, the Magmus has the potential to carry a game uh, on his shoulders, definitely. But um, the negative part is that Eruption, usually you want the enemy team to push into, oh wait, bot lane. Yep, he's Glad probably dead once here. more. 
I can't believe they're actually losing this game or losing <laughs> this lane. It doesn't feel like they should be losing to Dr. Pulse 24. It's a relatively passive lane. That they probably should have utilized. Way. That was awesome. What tide? The, the, the taunt, sorry. The, the oh, wrecked taunt. taunt. <laughs> I don't know if I've actually seen that one before. It just no, I don't think so. I missed it, I'm afraid. Anyways. Yeah, it's losing a lane that they arguably should be having. A, but, but I think, watching from the beginning, yeah, they, they clearly weren't really playing it all too aggressive. They were not really spending a yeah, lot. Yeah, they need to utilize it in level in the early levels before Nifora gets levels into the stun and the heal. Uh, but also Ophelia, like, the fact that they were free players running an offensive tri lane, but they still didn't secure even the hard camp. I mean, Gladiator or Ophelia was the only one defending the hard camp in the Legion Forest. Like, if he would have just had... Rhapsody and Gladiator in there with him as well. They would have easily been able to get a hard camp, and Ophelia would have been just able to stay and farm in the enemy jungle. Instead, he was uh, forced to rotate back to his own forest even before the lane phase began. So, yeah. fortunately for them. Oh, here comes the port out up into the top. I think Magnus realized, though, or maybe he's just going for a lucky rune. I think that was the case. Now yeah. there are going to be two people instead. They're going for Warbeast. He's going to challenge the eruption. Maybe a kill. No, Warbeast runs the other way. Very smart play by him. Magnus realizing all of a sudden. He's in trouble. He actually is able to avoid the zeal stun, though, by now Riptide clashes in. And they get a turn kill onto Ophelia. Warbeast, though, he hung around a little too long. And the minions actually end up killing him in return. So, it, it, it honestly, that's the trade better, you'd almost say, for LGT there. Yeah, certainly. Uh, there was uh, use of uh, the Nifora ultimate, of course. And the Dr. Pulsar is going to have to run all the way back to the base, as well as the Riptide ultimate. I mean, yeah. it was quite hilarious because Magnus just got his eruption off and Dr. Pulsar just jumped straight into him. Just when the eruption went off, so took full damage from the eruption. Magnus, with some really sweet sidesteps, with the help of his ghost marchers, were able to dodge the new forest seal as well and to get out there off there safely. So Kracer uh, definitely deserves a lot of credit so far. If he can farm a uh, portal key and get level 11 here, then, uh, yeah, then they're definitely back into this game. Uh, safe to say, Fuzzy Sloth feeling really good. He goes the Alchemist Bones here, as far Whoa, as his that's first greedy. item, really. Yeah, not even upgrading the boots first. Just getting Alk Bones ASAP. Now he is the top farm in the game, as you would almost expect with an Alk Bones this early on. But, uh, yeah, it is greedy. They are going up against an Ophelia, so there is some extra value there, to be fair. It is more than just simply a farming tool. And, and I mean, auto attack, or... or Speed or attack speed on him in general is usually considered pretty strong. You know that you get the brutalizer eventually. True. It's pretty good synergy there. So, I mean, it's it's not bad by any means. Like it's all about it, all, or it all comes down to their playstyle, what they choose to focus on. If they want to sit back and farm, or if they want to take it into the late game. Like in this particular case, like when they have both a Doctor Repulsor and a Warbeast, I kind of feel like, and you got an advantage off the laning phase with the Hellborn team having an uh, offensive tri lane that more or less failed, resulting in them being low levels. Like Fun Ring and Justin in level 6, so I think that if you were to go for a little bit more offensive items, then you could possibly create more space for your carries. Uh, but seeing as it's complexity, I guess it's fine you're sitting back and farm. They're confident in the late game, so. Thunderbringer, unfortunately, again, not having the greatest of starts. He is level 6, though. Has that Lightning Storm ready to go here, so. The potential for a kill could be very possible. In oh, fact, bottom. as I say this, yeah, bottom lane, Doctor's like, yes, speaking of kills, we're going to go ahead and get one. On a gladiator right here. Not much he could have done at that point. Up to the top lane, by the way. Prophet Invis finds Ophelia. Here comes Riptide with that Eye of the Storm and the easy kill to follow. They're going to clean up the creeps as well. And nothing's more frustrating as an Ophelia than, oh, at least he saves one creep. But still, losing a couple in his life. So, back to back. Very solid kills happening for Complexity. And keeping the momentum going well in their favor here. Yeah, Thunderbringer, yeah, 11 minutes in, still haven't seen him use the ultimate yet. Not that he's had a great <laughs> chance, but that's unfortunate. I mean, I guess you can use it for scouting at certain occasions, but yeah, at this point you can't really blame me for not using it. They might want to uh, try to look for something with Magnus before he got his pull key, but he decided to farm instead. He got it now, but now you can augur that it might be better to wait for level 11 before you make a big commitment. I don't know. I mean, he should probably head back to the bot lane and try to defend the tower. They shouldn't be giving these towers up freely. At, but they are. They are going to use the fortification, but no defense to follow yeah. it up. Unfortunately. Uh, where did Thunderbringer just TP? He TP'd back to base, okay. Well, it's a start. 
Yeah, you can tell LGT, it's, again, a little little off here in this matchup, unfortunately. And it's a little unfortunate, i got to say. I mean, this this really was a fun team to watch last cycle and earlier on in this cycle in bits and pieces. And a very promising team. But I, I have realized over a little bit of time, this is also one of these teams that, again, they have a lot of roster. I haven't seen Masatoshi since we saw these guys the first time. I think he was even their captain. Now, he hasn't been in these last several matches that we've happened to cast them. So I don't know if, like, there's something there or if they just simply go through all these players as far as their roster is concerned. So um, mm -hmm. they, they are kind of a little bit all over the place here. And, again, this game clearly, clearly, clearly just not going as planned slash it wasn't even the plan. Again, they randomed their oh, final Oh, look hero. at Dr. Pulsa, by the way, putting into mid. Magnus is setting it up as well, but oh, they're going man. to find him with the vision. Doctor's trying. <laughs> He's like, I see Magnus. Okay, there we go. He's going to catch him right here. He pulls him in. This heel set on top. Out comes a pitfall. Doctor's already flied away, though. Magnus just trying to run. He goes down, however. Riptide clashes in the background, kills Rhapsody. Doctor going to chase down Ophelia and get her killed as well. You see the call to arms coming out, but fortunately going to whiff right there. And Nymphora will get away. Meanwhile, Warby's just pushing the top lane. Gets the tower kill. Riptide kills Gladiator. And all going for complexity there. In that middle fight. Yeah, that was uh, a little bit unfortunate for the Hellborn team, I gotta admit. Like, Magnus being found there by a lucky new 4 TP, but at the same time, Complexity utilized it well, set up that trap beautifully, and well, everything has just been well executed on their part in this game. When this series, they probably stepped it up big time. Now, knowing that everything is on the line, but yeah, I don't think that LGT is going to stick into this much longer. They might give it one more try now when Magnus hits level 11 with that eruption. You might want to use it once this game at least, seeing as you got that early pull key, but... Yeah, yeah Riptide picking up the Codex now as well, so safe to say <laughs> the complexity is kind of toying around a little bit now. Yeah, trying to make a statement here, if anything. Whoa. Yeah, a little bit of lag, so I can feel that too. That was weird. Anyways, uh, I think Pine won versus Evil Corporation actually. First game looks that way at least for really? Monitor. They have the higher levels. Scout is still stuck on level 22, so I would assume so, yeah. To double check it after this, because yeah, that's that's pretty so. I mean, you know, if anything, we were mentioning with Pine, even if they happen at two other final two series here, they, honestly, they, it still could be possible. I still think nine points, again, I'm not, I haven't done all this math, but I always still think it could be possible. But it's more so Evil Corporation that if they don't. You know, finishing a strong like we could be finishing with some really crazy ties going on <laughs> in uh, these third and fourth place spots. Yeah, and opening up for yeah, complexity is happy with that result essentially. And seeing that Evil oh, Corporation yeah. losing that first game, so yeah, really some interesting stuff going on today, as uh, as far as results go, for sure. But uh, won't really get the best idea going in until going into tomorrow, of course, and obviously by the end of it. So. Definitely shaping up interesting, as we've pointed out. It's a level 2 codex now on Mr. Riptide. He's got plenty of burst to work with here. Um, yeah, you mentioned at least trying for one eruption. I was wondering, you know, hitting that 15-minute mark if we're going to see something. I mean, you have to. Like, LGT. come on. Otherwise, we just feel so degraded when leaving the game. You would just be staying awake all night, not being able to sleep. <laughs> They're not going to be able to sleep then. Yes, there's a bunch of see. Not. Something tells me they're not all on the same page. In fact, Magnus uh, is probably the one being like, no, let's let's keep going. Probably. Mr. Either that or it's the complete opposite. He's just like so pissed off with his teammates right now because he was doing well and the other ones were screwing it up. Sometimes that happens or sometimes that's the case at least. Yeah. I know for a fact from speaking from TMM experience right there, when you're doing really well, sometimes the one doing really well is actually the one we want to concede because he's just so mishappy with his teammates. <laughs> Yeah. But obviously this is not the MM, so let's leave that out of discussion for now. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem like they're all on the same page. Riptide, yeah, that's an illusion. It's so incredibly hard to tell with this skin of his. Which one that really is cool. a real one at the bottom lane. Codex level 2 as well. Nice. He's going to eye the storm. Oh, finds Rhapsody. There's a quick kill. <laughs> and the Aquas going to the crease. Nah, he might get turned on, though. Oh, we got the eruption. There we go. <laughs> The turn kills real. So, get something out of it. Yeah, that was a little <laughs> overkill. The bait's real from Rhapsody. And there's another vote to concede. So, yeah, they, they, they killed Fuzzy Sloth. They got to use the eruption. Now they can end the game happy here. 
uh, one would think so at least. And Swags does that know as well. Yeah, now Swags that desperately wants to concede at least. But come on, you don't have the. Okay, you're gonna get the kill on Oscar, but come on. Come on, guys. One All right. leaves. All right, yeah, you could tell they're, they're done. Yeah. Um, so is that other game? So the other game's done then, is what you're saying. Yeah, they're, they're the starting their one. game too. Okay. Yeah. I won the first one. I double checked. So we'll, we'll jump yes, into that sure. one here. Okay. It is going to be official. All right. So complexity takes that one there.